This skincare tip completely changed how I manage my skin and it fixed issues that I've been having for years. So this tip or technique is aimed at anyone who gets mild or moderate breakouts and they use a long 13 step skincare routine that involves exfoliators and hydrators and toners and retinols. You're doing everything that everyone tells you, whether it's doctors, influencers on social media, what brands tell you, and you still don't have the perfect skin, but all I want you to do is stop. Now I know what you're thinking, stopping all my active ingredients and all my exfoliants will actually result in my skin getting worse and my skin having more breakouts and the world might explode. But actually, it's really just not that simple. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Sapna. I'm a doctor who suffers with acne and it's because of that that I have tried everything under the sun for skin and luckily that makes me the perfect person to talk about it. I've studied lots about all things skin and derm and it's because of that I really feel like knowledge is power. So subscribe if this is what you're interested in. I want you to take one month to reset your skincare routine. Now disclaimer, this is not an overnight fix. If you're looking for some sort of skincare help that will ever fix your skin overnight, you're looking in the wrong place because that's not realistic. If you have moderate or severe acne that is red and cystic and inflamed, please skip this video, go and see your doctor. Not just following over-the-counter skincare and watching YouTube videos about it, you need prescription help. So what does resetting your skincare routine mean? This is something that requires a lot of persistence and a lot of patience and will help your skin in the long term. Now, I don't want you to stop looking after your skin and stop doing anything to your skin. I just mean that I want you to completely pare back all the active ingredients in your skincare routine and have a slightly more minimalist approach just for one month. Now, I want you to cut out and push away any exfoliating acids, so that's AHA, BHA, PHAs, and I want you to also cut out any vitamin A or retinols. I know it feels hard and counterintuitive, and Dr. Sapna, you've told us about all the magical things these skincare ingredients do, but actually, if your skin is not in the right place, you won't get all those benefits and you need to reset your skin. So why do it? A skincare reset will help A, control any inflammation that you have going on. So if you have quite inflamed skin that is very, very sensitive and just a little bit sore when you apply your chemical and physical exfoliants, a skincare reset will help control that inflammation. And B, it will help you kind of reevaluate what your skin actually needs. So if you had really oily skin when you were a teenager and you've kind of kept in your mind that you have oily skin, so you're using skincare that's constantly trying to control your oil production but actually after your skincare reset you might feel that your skin has changed as you've gotten older and you now don't have as oily skin as you used to so you can completely change your skincare routine to be suited for what your current state of skin is and see this will kind of help you pare back your routine and realize that you don't need to be spending so much on your 10, 12 step routine and you might only need a few things to help your skin. I'll talk to you a bit about my skin throughout this video as well. So in January, 2023, I decided to do a one month skincare reset. So my skin has always been problematic. I have had acne for years. When I was 16, I had Roaccutane, which really helped clear up that cystic acne that I had. My skin never really felt healthy, and that's because it was going through constant cycles of being dehydrated and then oily and then inflamed and then having a breakout, and it never seemed to quite balance. And that's because I was finding that my skin was in a bit of a rut. I was using active ingredients that would try and help control my mild acne. So I was using tretinoin as well as AHAs and BHAs. And I was finding that I would use tretinoin and the next day I would have lots of dry patches and then I felt like I had to stop all my other skincare for a couple of days and try and just help on the hydration. So I would start using hyaluronic acid and some facial oils and then I'd use tretinoin again and I'd try it again and then I'd end up going through this cycle of dry patches and not being able to use the skincare that I actually needed to help control my acne and then having the dry patches again where it'd be inflamed and sore and sensitive and kind of ending up in a rut. So what my skin needed was a reset. Now the purpose of this reset was to completely reset <laughs> 
The purpose of this reset was to completely control that cycle and actually realize what my skin really needed. So how do we actually do this skincare reset? Now, I don't want you to completely switch off from having a skincare routine. I don't think that's healthy for your skin. What I do want you to do is completely minimize what you actually need. Now, like I said earlier, I want you to stop any exfoliating skincare ingredients. So that will include your vitamin A, your AHAs and your BHAs. During this time, we're focusing on repairing our skin. For the first couple of weeks of your skincare reset, I want you to just do simple things. Now it's still important to cleanse your skin twice a day. I would suggest you avoid any cleansers that have any kind of exfoliation in it, and instead pick something that has hydrating benefits and just simple gel cleansers. The one I've been using is the Hyaluronic Acid Cleanser from the Inky List. The other one that I love that we've actually run out of is the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. Now those, both of these are inexpensive cleansers that you can use AM and PM. Neither will completely dramatically change your skin, but they're just aimed to support your skin whilst your skin is healing during your skincare reset. Now, I still want you to moisturize your skin. Part of the skincare reset is to focus on hydration. So the things that I've been using were the Hada Labo Moisturizing Cream. Now, this is basically hyaluronic acid in a cream formula. It's like a gel moisturizer that just absorbs really quickly and I can use it AM and PM. Similarly, I have the Kate Somerville oil-free cream. This is a little bit more expensive, so if you're feeling bougie, but again, this has nothing extra special in it. It's just does the simple stuff well. The last step that you cannot forget during your skincare reset is SPF. Now, the aim of your skincare reset is to help control inflammation and protecting yourself from the sun absolutely does that. So try and avoid loads of direct sunlight as usual and SPF is your best friend. Now, what should you expect during your skincare reset? You might not realize it and I certainly felt this way. I didn't realize that my over exfoliation and overuse of AHAs and BHAs were actually causing over exfoliation and inflammation of my skin. I suddenly noticed that my skin was far less sensitive than it used to be. I actually found that when I was using any kind of harsher skincare ingredients, my skin was suddenly not burning or stinging and actually tolerating things so much better. My skin was far less red and reactive to any skincare, and I suddenly stopped getting any of those tiny little whiteheads that were coming up on my skin. Now, the reason it's important to control inflammation is that inflammation is what triggers lots and lots of immune cells rushing to your skin. It's what triggers it swelling. Inflammation comes on very quickly, but it can also settle very quickly. And during your skincare reset, you'll see that it settles quite quickly. When your skin triggers inflammation and inflammatory cells again and again, it tries to rebuild your skin surface and it does that by creating more and more collagen production. However, the collagen that regrows isn't growing in nice, straight, symmetrical patterns. It's actually growing sort of up and down almost and that's what creates more and more texture and scarring on your skin after having inflammation. The repeated cycle of having inflamed skin and coming back from it also triggers melanocytes. So if you suffer with hyperpigmentation, this could be one of the reasons. Within one to two weeks of this skincare reset, you'll find that your inflammation is far more controlled and your skin is far less reactive, which is great. The second thing that your reset will focus on is hydration. I was getting lots of random dry patches around my face and my nose, my, around my chin, and during this reset, this completely stopped. My skin was looking much, much glowier, much healthier, and that's because I had stopped constantly attacking my skin and giving it more time to heal. I was actually talking to someone about why Japanese and Korean skincare has become so popular and the kind of principles they use, and I realized it's all about building on your hydration and then kind of doing your exfoliating afterwards. So that's exactly what I wanted to do during my skincare reset in early 2023. By kind of week three or week four, you'll find that your skin is much more balanced looking. And that's when you get to your stage of restarting your skincare routines and deciding what you actually need. So you can reevaluate your skin. You can have a look and see what the current state of your skin actually is. So for me, I noticed that my skin probably wasn't as oily and greasy as I thought it was and that I could actually pare back on my kind of oil fighting, oil controlling skincare ingredient. What I want you to do is focus on one skincare goal during this time. Pick what you actually think is your main skincare issue and try and focus on that. For me, I actually realized I didn't want to worry about acne so much straight away and that I wanted to just enjoy controlling inflammation and having my skin getting more and more hydrated. So when I reintroduced my skincare, I spent another two weeks just controlling that inflammation. I started by reintroducing niacinamide. Niacinamide has no exfoliation 
exfoliating effects. Instead, it helps uh, upregulate your ceramide production, which can help with your barrier function. The other thing I used was snail mucin. Now, snail mucin's pretty fucking gross and if you can kind of get over the fact that it's snail slime that you're going to put on your face and it's a bit strange and it's a bit sticky uh, eventually it does stop feeling sticky and actually it has some antimicrobial anti-inflammatory effects that were really helping my skin with its hydration after i completed my skincare reset with these hydrating ingredients for maybe another two weeks that's when I felt like I was ready to reintroduce my more harsh skincare ingredients. I was using tretinoin and I'm using it now. So I reintroduced that literally as slow as I could possibly go. So I started with twice a week and I also used the sandwich method, which is using a moisturizer, waiting 10, 15 minutes, then using your tretinoin, then waiting a bit longer and then using another moisturizer. And this really helped reduce any inflammation and it helped reset those dry patches that I was getting. I now get far better effects from that tretinoin that I was before. And I think that's all because I reset my skincare. So that's it for me talking about my skincare reset, this tip, this technique that will help you control any inflammation, any irritation that your skin was getting, help you reevaluate what your skin actually needs and focus on those simple things like hydration and barrier repair. If this is something you want to try, please let me know. I want to see how you get on. And if you've done it before, great. Let me know in the comments. If this is something that you like and you like more skincare videos like this, please hit subscribe and I'll catch you on another video.